if you've read Catcher in the Rye, right. you know, you, <laughs> you, you would understand why I right. said that because not um, a lot of rye in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's not, not, not a lot of rye. Not a lot of rye. He ain't doing catching no, either, no, no. to be quite honest with you. There's not a lot of catching, not a lot of rye. No. Do, 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 do. What's up, man? What's going on, Not much, man? Let <laughs> <laughs> me like just didn't talk for an hour. We <laughs> like just did talk for an hour. Right, yes. we, yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Nah, we did. Nah, we what's did. up, man? No, nah, it's finally I'm great good. to finally meet you in person, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those things to where, uh, you know, black mm. creators, we need to like meet in person and get that energy from one another and stuff like yeah. that, man. So, what's up? How you yeah. feeling, man? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the sun's out. It's actually a beautiful day today. It so. is. <laughs> <laughs> There's just been so much rain <laughs> so the past rain. couple of days. I'm just like, <laughs> yo, I'm, I need the sun. But nah, I've been, I've been pretty, I've been feeling pretty good. Um, this year is starting to get lifted up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, did, I did a conservative amount of projects last year that mm -hmm. were a bit. Um, stressful, but you know they were really they were really big opportunities, mm -hmm. and I was able to mold myself from those projects. Right. And coming into this year, I'm happy to say like I've been awarded the opportunity to work on bigger and better projects now. Mm -hmm. um, just this past um, uh, Thursday, I worked on a um, Lowe's project. Okay. Yeah, I did. And it was with a uh, director that I found out he won an Oscar. What? <laughs> Who? Um, his name is Ben Proudfoot. Okay. Yeah, Brent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What? That's yeah. crazy. So I, I had no idea who he was, right. but we had a great conversation. Um, and it was just, it, honestly, he kind of changed my whole mind frame on how I want to approach um, just documentary projects or short, mm -hmm. like short narrative projects in general. Um, like he kind of just kept it simple. Talk um, about that. Like, so I like your work. Mind you, I saw your work. Shout out to Maya Table. I mean, I know about Maya Table. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Maya okay. Table. Knew Maya Table for, for years. Diamond, um, producer Diamond. Nice. Met her at an event years ago, and then reconnected with her at um, my homie Jack, who doesn't like direct anymore. Okay. She put her uh, project in his film festival. Reconnected okay. with her, and then the Mariba, Mariba, yeah. Mariba, yeah, project that you DP. Mm. I was like, this guy has like nice, clean work. And then I was like, let me follow this dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude is dope, or whatever, like that. Bet, and then you know we follow each other and stuff like that. So that's how I came to like your work and stuff like that, man. Nice. So so yeah, like talk about like the beginning, the beginning of like Wayne, man. Oh man, like <laughs> pre GSU, pre you know what I'm the saying. Beginning of Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> The beginning of Wayne. <laughs> like an NBC oh, show. man, right. Um, so if I'm honest with you, the, I think the appropriate beginning of Wayne had to start uh, with me being in boarding school in Tennessee. Right. Um, so after I graduated, because I went there from seventh grade to senior year, mm -hmm. uh, 12th grade, and uh, one of the highlights of that was in order to graduate, we had to hike the Appalachian Trail um, and also uh canoe down a river mm. um it was either that or we had to take our final exams right so that was the deal with like every senior right um that went to that school and right. of course every senior chose the later option because right. nobody wants to take exams right <laughs> um safe to say i survived right <laughs> um right? so after after i graduated i went to france mm. uh, for film school and um it was an unofficial film school to me because I thought I signed up for acting. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I first got into this business, I was an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I still am. I practice in my own time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, still going to the classes. But uh, I signed up for filmmaking mm -hmm. by accident. So my teacher ended up being this Irish guy um, from Dublin, Ireland. Mm -hmm. and uh, Banshees of... <laughs> and, uh, Banshees of a Nation. Yeah, I knew you were... <laughs> I knew you were about to, it was, which was a great movie, by the way. We will talk about that soon. But, um, you know, he was a great teacher because he taught me about the foundations and the principles. Mm -hmm. His favorite movie was Drive. Oh, right. Yes. With um, 2011, Ryan Yeah, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. Yes. yes, yes. His favorite movie was Drive, and he used that analogy for almost every single, like, writing, directing, um, camera, like, principle for sure. you yes. could. But he still taught us, like, the basics and foundations of... Um, 
He taught us how to basically light. He mm-hmm. taught us how to write. He taught us how to edit mm-hmm. um, using, I think at that time, I think my first editing software I was using was Final Final Cut? Final Cut Pro? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the free trial? Or yes. Was it the, yeah, 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 yeah. The free trial. Yeah, because you're black. <laughs> so, right. right. Final Cut Pro was like very expensive back in the day. It was very All expensive. All you needed was like just another email. To, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Just it, another you know? email. 30 day free trial. Listen, right. <laughs> not everybody knew this, okay? I didn't know. I didn't know this. When I got out to Atlanta, I was right. very embarrassed. Right. I was like, I gotta switch emails? <laughs> <laughs> But, um, <laughs> but so he taught us all of that. And then after about two to three weeks, mm-hmm. he was just like, all right, you see that box over there? We rinsed over, opened up the box. Mind you, um, the place, it was Normandy, mm-hmm. right? Normandy, France, right. where they stormed the beaches, right. all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were in a chateau. The name of the place was called Chateau de la Epingia. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great place, and it was actually a castle that was inhabited by the Nazis, which was taken over by the Americans during the war. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it turned into a rancher's and farmer's home. Okay. And every single year, these guys basically allow um, a a a, uh, a acting and film school to go on, mm-hmm. like in their home, because they're just like, we love this community. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to see more people. We want to see these kids be active mm-hmm. and be successful in their career. So yeah, bring it on. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, you'll be in France. Right. <laughs> so um, so after about two and a half, three weeks, we went over to a box. We opened up the box, and there was a camera, a Canon seventy. Right. That was the first camera I shot a short film on. Mm-hmm. Um. And the name of the short film, it's actually still on my Vimeo. Mm -hmm. Um, It was basically the story about a father that um, he had a daughter, but his wife had died. Mm -hmm. And so he had to work all day. He didn't have enough time to spend with his daughter. So he was just like, oh, perfect idea. I will adopt a son so that way he could spend more time to play with her while I'm away. Right. Unfortunately, his daughter died in a car accident later. Mm-hmm. So he's feeling these feelings of being estranged from her, from her daughter that he forgot he had a son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so at the end, the basically, basically the son confronts him. And when he walks out the door, the father tries to go get him. But then he sees the ghost of his daughter walking with his son mm-hmm. as they're both leaving his life. Right. Right. The funny part was at the premiere of the movie, which, by the way, um, the countryside of France, Normandy, nobody speaks a lick of English. Right. So they invited the locals right. to come to the premiere. And of this movie all, was in English. Yes. Right. They they like they saw the premiere of all the movies. By right. the way, um, nobody understood it. Right. But everyone thought the dad was having an affair with his daughter. Right. Which, which was, is a very French thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if that is just, right. you know what? I'm going to let y'all have it. Right. Because later I learned this. I said, it's, it's, um, I learned this from an acting teacher. It basically goes like, it's not what you meant to do. It's how it was delivered. Right. <laughs> but once it's out there, it's out there. You've right. already said it. <laughs> So I was like, Great. right. <laughs> but shortly after that, I came back to Atlanta. I had found out uh, three days before I got on the plane from France that I got accepted to Georgia State, right, uh, for the business program. So came back to Georgia State. Um, I got into the business program. I failed accounting like three times, <laughs> like everybody else did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like everybody except my business partner, he somehow got through it like on the right. second try, which I'm just like, good job, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm super proud of you. But um, so after that, I had a guidance counselor that gave me some great advice. She mm-hmm. was like, you know, there's this program called Georgia Film Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, they just opened up its doors. I think you'd be good there. Go check it out. Take the PA Film Academy. See what you think. There I met a guy by the name of Akil DuPont. Mm-hmm. And that was, I think, one of my first films that I was a, respectfully, that I was a PA on. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned a great deal from him. He shot a short film down here. We had a great amount of conversation about his upbringing, how he came up, and basically his advice to me, along with a couple other people. But his advice to me was, hey, man, you see a camera you like, you know, go out and rent it, just play with it, see how it works, see how it operates. And that's what I did. But me, 
but 2015, Dwayne having the knowledge of I shot my first film on a Canon 70. Mm-hmm. This is like the best camera to me right. in the world. You know, I'm, I'm shooting everything on that camera. Mm-hmm. So my first um, opportunity to become legit was working for a radio host. Mm-hmm. Uh, she went by the name of, of Raven, mm-hmm. um, a Jagirl Raven. Mm-hmm. So Raven Drummer. And um, she... Uh, she had a radio show that was at Georgia State. You know, sometimes I would come and I would help out film the radio show. And then I would follow her to red carpet events with celebrities all over Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be honest. I didn't know all the celebrities. I was just right. really bad with just remembering right. names. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, this was at the time where, like, there was a new celebrity every Monday. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I don't know who this guy is. Right. But Trap cool. rapper or right. Trap or rapper or, or, and oh, or you're, you're on, you're on house, right. Housewives. Housewives, right. Great. Yeah. I don't know which character you are. <laughs> right. Are you the one that threw the drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> you're the one that's uh, <laughs> right. like incarcerated forever? I don't know. Sure. Like, okay, cool, cool, right, cool. Right, right. So, <laughs> so, um... I did that for a little while. Then after that, I went to go do work for the Rialto, which mm. that's when I started editing a lot more. Mm. Um, it didn't require me to shoot a lot, which I was like, okay, that's not so bad. Um, but they had a reel that they had to make for their, I think it was like 2019 going into, wait, it was like 2018 going into 2019 mm-hmm. like season. So I got my editing chops just from working for them for like literally a summer going into my next official job, which was like a content producer Mm -hmm. working for a South African Mm -hmm. company by the name of Snake Nation. Mm -hmm. Um, They were great, but that was actually my opportunity to shoot a little bit more. Mm -hmm. They represented artists between here and South Africa, but mainly just here. And Mm -hmm. their base of operations was just to put out as much content as possible about new and upcoming artists in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So they had a lot of open houses, a lot of open mics Mm -hmm. and shows and whatnot, and throwing a lot of parties. Mm -hmm. And I would just go and I would film them. Mm -hmm. Um, Interviewing as many people as I could, all the artists that would come up on stage, you know, Mm -hmm. the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was a great experience, but I just was like, like, man, I don't, I don't want to be a, a freaking event videographer. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, and props out to event videographers because that is a skill, but that's a skill I don't have as well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just, it's a lot. It's just like a lot of moving around, right? It and is. like being in people's faces. It and is. <laughs> and, and at that time, I realized that I had been doing that for like the past what two, three years. Yeah, you know, I was like, I've been to the events, I've done it. I mm-hmm. can say that I've done my chops in it. Everyone has to do it, right? But it's not where I wanted to stay. Yeah, you know. So after that. um, I I did GFA again. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time, I decided to take a year off of school, mm-hmm. and I enrolled into the electrician program. Mm-hmm. So I enrolled into the electrician program, and then um, shortly after that, I actually got my first first like official like gig on a union show. Mm-hmm. It was Jennifer Aniston's Dumpling, mm-hmm. and how was that experience? That was where I actually met most of everyone that I know today. Correct. That that still knows me. Mm-hmm. Um, Maddie, the first AD, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like I'm still shocked that he still knows me till this day. Mm-hmm. Um, and along with, uh, it's a couple more people, like my, my brain's getting fuzzy. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I can say is that Jennifer Anderson is surprisingly the same height as me. Really? Yes. <laughs> Which right. she's so nice. Right. She's wonderful. But like she's legitimately the same height as me and I never would have guessed that. Right. <laughs> right. She does have like big energy. Right. And yeah. I'm just like, she seems so tall. Yeah. No, nope, right here. Like, right. <laughs> so right. that was great. But another eye-opening experience was when I got the opportunity to put on a steady camera. Mm-hmm. Um, How was that? <laughs> first of all, the person that I got to put the rig on for his name, I still have him in my phone. He was the Steadicam operator for Remember the Titans. Jesus. Yes. Whoa. And um, and he was also the Steadicam op for uh, that movie where um, I want to say she <laughs> she adopted him and then put him in the football. Um, oh, right. Uh, yes, that movie. Right, like I, <laughs> we don't speak of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> we don't speak of that movie. Listen, I still love her. Okay, okay. We don't speak of that film. <laughs> I still love her to death. I think, I think she did one for the community. <laughs> Sorry, but um, 
She was, was in, great in Miss Congeniality. She was. Yeah. She was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I put on I put on his steady cam rig and um I was not only kind of like I was eye opening for me, but it was just a shock. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I had no idea your hips had to be this strong right. to man this thing for for hours hours at a day. Right. And so on there, it was an Alexa Mini with a regular like Panavision 32 millimeter uh, lens. And it was a pretty sizable rig. And I'm just like, you know, yeah. moving back and forth this time and third. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like right. dude. So I asked him, I was just like. You're, so your hips have to be crazy strong, right? Like you mm -hmm. have to stay in shape. He's like, yes. I was like, how do you stay in shape for this? I surf. Oh. He he surfs. Mm -hmm. He you could say he was a professional surfer, but it's not like he's advertising. Mm -hmm. it. But that's what he did for exercise, mm -hmm. just so that way he could keep himself nimble. Mm -hmm. Do you know that man is almost sixty? Yeah. Like that's crazy. It was impressive. Wow. And still looks like he's thirty. Right. <laughs> right. And so and and you know I had a mad amount of respect for him. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, the another eye-opening experience of realizing that this world is not as big as you think it is. Mm -hmm. The second AD was my junior year English teacher's son. Word. That's crazy. <laughs> the only way that I figured this out mm -hmm. was I was wearing a shirt. It said the web school. Mm -hmm. And I was standing in place of Harold Perrineau. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the time, I was the only black person with invisible vicinity to where the other ADs could see to be like, we need a black person to stand in for the black actor Correct. that we have for this very white <laughs> right. movie. Um, I, I, so they they said, eeny, meeny, mighty, uh, Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> so um, could you please come over right. and stand in place yeah. for for uh, Parina Perinu? His right. name is Harold Perinu. <laughs> Get it right. Damn it. Like, so <laughs> um, so right. I was standing in place of him, and then the second AD comes up, and he said... My mother teaches at that school. Right. And I look back and I said, who's your mother? And he says her name. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're lying because mm -hmm. she was my teacher. He said, shut up. I was like, no, I'm serious. He pulls out his phone and calls her. Right. He said, mom, I have Dwayne Young here. Do you know who that is? He's like, yes, he was my student. Right. He's like, he's working on my film right now. Right. <laughs> at that time, we deliberated into a whole separate conversation. His daughter was there. Mm. And his daughter goes, hey, be careful. If he likes you, he'll take you with him on all his projects. And I mm. said, <laughs> don't joke like that right. because I actually do need that. <laughs> Because I'm very broke. <laughs> okay, I will work on all his union right, projects. Right. I will fly to LA. I yeah. will do it. I will make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. because after the project was over, I actually got called to be a camera utility on Lee Daniel Star. How was that? That was what changed me mm -hmm. ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, because then I knew wholeheartedly not only what I wanted to do, but what I had to do. Mm -hmm. um, that experience to me, in, in my honest opinion, is what shaped me to be a strong creative today mm -hmm. and being able to step into other people's projects. And when they ask me a question of like, what do you think? I can actually give a concrete answer of like, this is solely my opinion. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with me. But if you're trying to achieve this type of look, if you're trying to achieve this type of feeling, this is what I think you need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I'm only working from a limited amount of knowledge, but at this time, it I had been doing it for basically, I want to say like four or five years. Mm -hmm. Like at that time, jumping from that project to another project to another union show, because after Star, it was uh, Watchmen on mm -hmm. HBO. Mm -hmm. Then after that show, I jumped to Bad Boys. Like it just, it was constant. Quick. Yeah, it mm -hmm. didn't stop. Mm -hmm. um, when when I was the camera utility, I had the rare opportunity to make a very close relationship with the DP at that time. Mm -hmm. um, the DP, which his name is escaping me right now, mm -hmm. um, but he took it upon himself to actually take me around the sets, mm -hmm. show me like what, show me the reason for each of the departments. Mm -hmm. Like. Yes, the camera is great, mm -hmm. and yes, the lights are big and fancy. Mm -hmm. But if you do not have someone that's going to put this plant over there, if you do not have someone that's going to paint this wall, if you don't have someone that's going to set this bed, make it this way, mm -hmm. or understand why this wall needs to be that color, why this wall needs that painting, or why she needs to be in that costume to stand the third, it doesn't matter what you're shooting because it will always look like shit. Mm -hmm. you know? So 
it's important to understand why you need your other departments and why you need to trust them. And mm -hmm. you also need to trust who you're putting in charge of those departments. Mm -hmm. you know what what makes a great crew to you? To me, to me, what makes a great crew, man. Because you've been on a lot of sets, so yeah. it's just like, what? So, well, what makes a great crew to me is people that not only have the ability to run a set themselves, mm -hmm. but know their job well enough to be able to not only delegate, but be able to communicate effectively mm -hmm. to another department and to the director and to the DP and to whoever is in charge of them at that time. Mm -hmm. Like knowing how to effectively communicate like what they need and what you need. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a great career mm -hmm. because communication is is just number one period. Yeah. Um, I still think it's something that some people struggle with nowadays, mm -hmm. like when it comes to the big sets and it's and it's fine and it's whatnot. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my experience did come from working on smaller sets, like going into the big sets. And the only difference is that the bigger sets just have more money mm -hmm. and they have a lot more people. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it's still the same thing. Mm -hmm. Communication is number one. And if you know how to communicate effectively what you need, how they need it, and then you're able to use critical thinking, mm -hmm. you know, to understand with like, oh, okay, they're probably going to want to do this, want to do that, it's not a third, da, 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 you know, boom. And you're able to deliver every single time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, because something, a hard pill that I had to swallow was essentially not everyone is going to want to hear your ideas at first, right. you know. Um, that's just how it is because you need to see how it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to see how they get to a finished product. Mm -hmm. Cause with production, when you go to the movies, you just see a movie, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? See the finished product. Right. Mm -hmm. And for other people that probably don't work in the film industry, when they see a movie there to them, it's just like every day. But when right. I see a movie in my mind, I'm just thinking, I know what it took for them to get right. that shot. <laughs> right. And I know probably what had to happen. That that dude probably had to run 30 laps before yes. that shot was <laughs> perfect. Like, he probably had to set the camera for 15 sure. times. Yes. Like, they probably went into overtime. Right. Especially if it's a night scene. I'm like, damn, yeah. that's probably like four right. overnights that's matched into one. Right. <laughs> like, I was right. I was watching a interview with, um, I want to say, Danny Wang. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the martial artist of, of IP Man. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm -hmm. And he was explaining to me when he was doing a scene with Bruce Lee, it took them, I want to say, 20 days mm -hmm. to shoot one action scene. Mm -hmm. Because over in China, their culture, like whenever they're doing their action scenes whenever they're doing their fighting scenes especially the style of, of ip man mm -hmm. or any one of their films per se um they're very particular about the angles mm -hmm. you know like they have to get this punch from this angle right but they have to get that punch from that angle and they have to get this kick from that mm -hmm. angle this and a third so and they, it was shot on film and yes it's not like the brand identity no <laughs> so you can't, no. it's like no it's in a locked like yes. established shot it's you a know? locked established shot yes you know what I'm saying right. and they have shot list after shot list after mm -hmm. shot list just on this one thing and that's just for one scene so right. imagine an, a movie that is like that that's over an hour and 15 minutes long right you know what I'm saying right so um, so I understand what it takes to make some of these movies that are going on now today, mm -hmm. which is why I feel like whenever someone asks for my opinion on a movie, you know, my opinion is a little bit jaded because yep. in my opinion, I'm just like, first of all, it's, it's a feat that they got it done. A, even a bad movie is a good movie. Right. They still made a movie. Right. You know, right. that's, that's more than a lot of people can say. Mm -hmm. They made a movie. They they got it to distribution right. and it's on a freaking screen. Right, that's freaking hard. Yeah, super. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's it's multiple layers to mm -hmm. producing, not just even producing. I want to say the most basic movie. Right. You know what I'm saying? Still a lot of still a lot of hard work. A lot right. of toes being stepped mm -hmm. on. A lot of people getting their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. So producing something good. Yeah. Oh shit! Right, don't <laughs> <laughs> um, because no, no, I, I, I have OG that you know works as a steady cam up on Marvel films. Yeah. He showed me the behind the scenes, and I was like, "That is insane!" It is it insane. Is. It's very insane. And like, I don't even want to talk about like the production side of like that. Mm. 
like talking to like executive producers, producers, talking to line managers, talking to line producers. Like, no. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> it is. It is. You know, I I can confidently say that I've been a- around those positions enough to know what it takes. Right. And I'm just sitting here like I'm comfortable with being the being the person to produce flattering images. Right. You know, I'm comfortable with that discipline. Mm-hmm. So, you know, after after working on Dumplin' and after working on Star, which mm-hmm. was a great experience, Joaquin Cedillo, mm-hmm. that was the name of the DP. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing that just hooked me was the, the second AC took me to the camera truck. Mm-hmm. And he told me, break down the camera. So I broke down the entire camera. I fully studio built Alexa Mini uh, with a Panavision a 45 millimeter lens, matte box, everything, mm-hmm. uh, even with the file focus on there, uh, with a Hayden unit, um, all that stuff. Uh, had um, a Hayden focus. Mm-hmm. I had to break it down completely, all the way from the SDIs to the file focus mm-hmm. motor to the bars to the mm-hmm. lens itself, um, all the way down to the batteries. And then mm-hmm. he told me put it back together. Mm-hmm. I had to do that three times. Mm-hmm. Do it three times effectively. Mm-hmm. After I could, after I confidently knew how to put that camera back together, I was just like, okay, this is this is what that feels like. Right. <laughs> like be it, like water as we right. <laughs> Like I was like, I was like, there is no other feeling in the world right now. Right. Where no one can tell me that this doesn't feel amazing. But it is like kicking the tree a thousand times, you know what I'm saying, yeah. with the shin. So it's just like, talk about like that process of like continually like repetitive work mm-hmm. about like learning your camera and stuff like that. Like it is, it's one thing because you're cons- you're constantly learning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not just learning one camera. You got to learn them all. Right. You know, because the Sony's, the Reds, the, the, the Sony's, Aries, the Reds, the Cannons. Aries, the Ari Flexes, mm-hmm. the 35 mils, yep. the analogs, you, you got to you gotta know all of them, mm-hmm. okay? Even going all the way back to the DSLRs, mm-hmm. because every, every one of them has a different menu, every one of them has a different function. Cellular too. Right, exactly. So it, knowing this, you'll be versatile in understanding what your boss wants. Mm-hmm. And by your boss, I mean your DP. Right. You know, your cinematographer. Mm-hmm. Or even your first AC. Right. You know, because they're going to be asking for quite a bit when you're moving mm-hmm. up in the ranks. And mm-hmm. they're going to expect you to know. Mm-hmm. So the more efficient that you are at not only knowing what a problem is, mm-hmm. like, boom, like, hey, this camera just went down. Holy right. crap, let me check on my SDIs mm-hmm. real quick. Let me check my ins and outs. Yep. Um, is, do I have a faulty connection? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, the monitor's just down. Oh, yep. I got to reset the tarot deck. Mm-hmm. Or I got to reset an antenna. Like mm-hmm. this Simple stuff like mm-hmm. that. Problem solving. Right. Just it, your job becomes problem solving. And then solving problems before they even become a problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, because that's a serious situation. Right. Hey, uh, sound man, uh, this is, you gotta, gotta fix this because I already know. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's even, it, it'll even come to a point to where you'll see a mistake being done in someone else's department mm-hmm. and then you'll want to say something, but you don't want to come across as offensive. Right. So you have to politely tap someone and be like, oh, hey, um, there's water running under that lunchbox. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, does someone want to? bring that up to level so that way the circuit doesn't break and you guys lose connection power to your M18s mm-hmm. and you blow a fucking fuse. Right. <laughs> or we all get electrocuted. Right. And know, die. And die. Cause, right. Because <laughs> that would suck. Right. Because like, I don't know if you want to battle with the insurance company. Right, right, right. Because you the don't. union. Uh, no. Right. So it's 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 a lot. Right. You know, um, I, I did that one time mm-hmm. on, on Watchmen because a friend of mine had asked me to come in and, and help out at the last minute. And uh, they were shooting a scene. And while the shooting was going on, it was heavy rain and it was out in Decatur. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was like a, it was a gang box that was right there. And I could tell it was a couple of lights that was hooked up. Um, you got a two out, three out cables and a couple of just basic stingers that was hooked mm-hmm. up. There. Um, it had a pad over it. And then all of a sudden it was just this gush of water. It was like a river. It was mm-hmm. like a small river like you would see on the side of the street going into a drain. Um, but the the box was right next to it. Mm-hmm. Just this river. And I was looking at it and I'm just like, five more minutes and that water's going to change directions and this entire box is going to get flooded. Right. So I dropped what I was doing and I was trying to find the nearest electrician and finally found this dude with a great beard. Mm-hmm. Um, I tied to him. I said, hey, um, I just pointed. Right. And I said, river, that lunchbox needs to be lifted up 
uh, because water is going to hit it and right. it's going to do a thing that I don't think you're going to like. It's going to make you look bad at your job. Right. And he's like. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. And then he goes and lifts it up by putting like four apple boxes up. Just so I say, but I gotta put apple boxes up. Right. <laughs> just, just so that way right. it's not even touching the ground. Correct. And then finally my nerves calms down. Right. I'm just like, whew, okay, right. great. So <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's that's fair. But it's just that if if I was a PA mm-hmm. or freaking and not knowing what that was, I'd right. probably just wouldn't have been able to call that out, mm. you know? So it's not only knowing how to problem solve in your own job, but also knowing how to save other people's ass when mm. probably they don't see some shit. <laughs> and let's talk about, like, let's talk about that. Problem solving and your foray into becoming a cinematographer, right? So mm-hmm. it's funny you say one of your OGs is a steady cam op for, remember, the Titans was a surfer. Mm-hmm. Your style to me is like, very like fluid like skater surfer style like yeah. lesbesky you know what i'm saying like very like but you stay in the darkness like conrad hall and mm. bradford and stuff like that so talk about like how did you learn your style mm. and your voice as a cinematographer making a lot of mistakes yeah um that was number one uh learning my voice it just took a minute simply because I was in the realm of wanting to experiment with people that didn't want to experiment. Mm. Um, So that's what I mean by making mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I was making a lot of bold choices when it was not necessary for me to do that. I simply just needed to do what was asked for me. Mm -hmm. And it took me a minute to to do that because it was just a bit of an ego death. Like Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, dude, calm down. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're being asked to work on these projects, which is great. I had to understand how to work with other directors, mm-hmm. first of all. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the biggest thing. And then I could start molding my style in there a little bit because mm-hmm. that is what mattered to me mm-hmm. like 110%. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I was just like, I have to understand how to not only deliver on what my style is, but also deliver on what someone else's style is. Right. You know? Um, and then later I had to figure out how to combine the two. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I still give someone else what they want while still accomplishing my look as well? Mm-hmm. You know, kind of coming in the middle, meeting in the middle of that medium. Mm-hmm. Um, so making mistakes and then watching a lot of movies mm-hmm. and watching a lot of TV shows on mute. Mm. I turn the sound off. Interesting. Right. Okay. And then from another DP, the Wandering DP, Patrick yes. Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's my guy. Um, he he gave a little tip. Mm-hmm. He would hook up a histogram to his TV, and he mm-hmm. would actually read the light levels that would be showing mm-hmm. um, on whatever show he was watching. Yeah, because you're like all of your stuff is like properly like exposed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this dude knows what he's doing. Because like, I'm like, yeah. how does he get like properly exposed like all the time? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, so you just oh, okay, bet, 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 yeah. bet, bet. Like, okay, that's a trick right there. Because it was it was basically down to the science, like right. it. It got to a point to where whenever I was watching a show, I almost knew the lens they were shooting on. Yes. And if I didn't know the lens, I at least was in the ballpark of like, this is probably the direction they're heading. Yeah. Isn't that great you know? though? It's just like, oh, that's like a Panavism. Like, right. Film. That's like a Zeiss TV3. That's right. Like, <laughs> looks like, that's a, that's a right. little red. Yeah. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, basically just knowing how to nail it in and right. like tell the difference. But um, alongside with just watching it on mute, I would uh, focus on what's happening in the foreground, focus on what's backing, happening in the background. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm not on set or when I'm not watching TV, um, I'm just outside looking at streets. I'm looking at buildings. I'm inside looking at a lobby or I'm, or mm-hmm. I'm just looking. I'm looking at people, mm-hmm. not in a creepy way. Right. Um, <laughs> like right. I am watching how right. light interacts with the environment mm-hmm. and I'm trying to mimic that. Right. Um, that is advice that I got from, um, he, he goes by the name of Brian... Oh boy. He was my electrical teacher back mm-hmm. at GFA. Mm-hmm. And, Shout out to Brian. Right. And um, he basically lit, he was the gaffer for Pink Panther, Pink Panther 2, and I think Pink Panther 3. Okay. And um, this is a well lit movie. Right. Mm-hmm. And he did a, a, 
he did October Sky as well. Okay. And he, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, it was his job to right. imitate the sun. Right. And make it look like there were no lights. Right. His one piece of advice that stuck with me for years was, you need to light the scene, and then you need to make it to where it doesn't look like there's lights in the scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So on mm-hmm. top of wrapping my brain around what the hell that meant. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, um, right. <laughs> one of our tasks in GFA was we were commissioned with a set. We had a basic set. It was like a living room and a hallway. Mm-hmm. What we did all day is we just lit it. Mm-hmm. That's it. We just lit a hallway mm-hmm. and we took readings. Mm-hmm. So I would take my light meter and I would put it up against the wall. If the camera's facing this way, I would hold that light meter up against the wall. Boom, I would hit it and I'd be like, okay, that's at, that's at like a 2-2. Two, two. My exposure is at F2-2 two, two, or it's at a T-stop of 2. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm at a T-stop of 3. Like this is what I want to get it down to this exposure. Mm-hmm. So I would go tell my guy like, hey, um, put 216 over the light. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see what that is. Or back the light up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I would adjust that light till it got to the exposure that I wanted mm-hmm. because then I knew that's what the camera would match, mm-hmm. right? Um, now, would you do that on all skins or would you do that specifically on black skins? I would do that on all skins. Okay, But right. for black skins, for black skin, I would, I pay attention to it times 10 yes because we absorb more light way more melanin way more. right <laughs> right we shout absorb... out to like god in the universe right because <laughs> like Thank we you, absorb god. way more like light than every other race exactly you know? no so, shade r- exactly literally i mean <laughs> we got to stay in the shade so we're right burn, but I mean... <laughs> and sunscreen too right because exactly. niggas don't be on sunscreen why <laughs> Why, like, Fuck why, why do we still have this conversation? We need sunscreen, okay? All right? During the summer, I get blacker. During right, the winter, sure. I get light skin. Oh, right, like, right. that. that's a thing. It happens. But <laughs> but when it comes to lighting black people on film, I, I tend to, well, not just on film, but just period, mm-hmm. um, I take the light away mm-hmm. uh, whenever it's needed or whenever I need a little bit more, I'll probably just add in a LED unit and it's super diffused mm-hmm. um, because we don't need that much, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. One thing that I have been learning that observing, I, I'll tell you this and I'll be honest with you. Um, what I do every single day, mm-hmm. literally, like first thing when I wake up or I make my breakfast, I go to Vimeo, I watch commercials. Same. I do the same thing, I bro. just... I, a monster, dog. I just watch yeah. commercials mm-hmm. all day. If I am reading an article right. or I'm just browsing off and, you know, that little ad pops up in the right-hand corner, yep. I'll be like, oh, that's Alexis. Yep. I like the way that's exposed. Yep. Who shot mm-hmm. that? Who right. directed it? Right. Who, what? I, I, right. I, I get obsessed same. with certain videos yeah. because it's something about it that caught my attention mm-hmm. and I need to find out what caught my attention about it. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And so... That that's what started to mold me into being obsessed with knowing how to not only expose correctly, Mm -hmm. but be intentional with your lighting. Right. You know what I'm saying? Understand what you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Understand what you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Know who it's for Mm -hmm. and know who your audience is. Mm -hmm. You know that like it, it, it goes over a, a plethora of subjects, but being intentional with your lighting helped me understand of like this is the emotion that i'm trying to affect, like that, that i'm trying to emote do you feel like you have to be like a scientist on set a little bit yeah not all the time mm-hmm. you know because it, at times i would see like it would probably be a very experienced director that's that's working with a fresh dp or a very experienced dp that's working with a fresh director mm-hmm. um and they still plays in it one hand and into the other mm-hmm. but as long as one person knows knows how to be the nerd, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, while the other person is still remaining the storyteller, right. it still can work mm-hmm. one hand in the other. Mm-hmm. What does help, like, effectively, in my opinion, is knowing how to be the storyteller through and through. Right. You know, because I'll be honest with you, I am not the person that's going to be the most technical mm-hmm. on set. I will admit that. But I do know how to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And I do know how it will make someone feel if I go this direction, Mm -hmm. you know, with my lighting. I know how I feel if I go this direction with my lighting. Mm -hmm. So what period is it? 
what time of day mm. is it is it raining outside mm. like is it dusk mm. is it morning like are they sad mm. are they happy mm. like what's what's going on you know what i'm saying mm. so um that that is mainly like what helps me to answer your question what molded me into dialing in my style mm. is watching a lot of tv knowing what i like mm. knowing what i would prefer to stay away from but still understand why it was shot that way mm. But knowing how to mold the two, bring it into the middle and being like, okay, I know I can effectively deliver on this. Mm -hmm. This is what I like doing. Mm -hmm. But if I have to do this, I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the stories that you brought to life, Nina Lee and Zay Jordan, sorry about that. Yeah. That was like very well shot. Mm. I was like, this dude is <laughs> like, okay. So <laughs> that was like, this dude is like really like on the level of like, so this person DP, needs to be on TV right now. Right. So the, <laughs> the DP for sorry about that, Matthew Antonino, he's, right. a, he's a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually one of my first like assistant camera gigs mm -hmm. in college. Right. Uh, that was when I came back to school because I took a year off mm -hmm. uh, working union and then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go get my degree because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to make my parents happy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they wanted from right. me. You know, I want to get my degree, too. Mm -hmm. I want to be the person in my family to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back to school to finish up my degree. And I met Matt uh, mm -hmm. in a, a creative media industries class. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> he was just like, hey, I just bought a camera. Right. And uh, I have this show that I wrote. Right. And, you know, I would love for you to be a part of it. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, cool. So we got coffee. We, I talked about my experience, what I did. Right. And um, he was like, cool. Do you want to be my first AC? And right. I was just like, sure. Right. I, had, <laughs> I had no idea, like, right. what the hell I was doing, but I was willing to learn. And I made a mistake earlier. Um, I said the DP was Matthew Antonino. Actually, the DP was the person who taught me how to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, his name was Edward Martinez. Mm -hmm. And Ed Mart. He, Ed, Ed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ed Mart, the, the one and only yeah, Ed, Ed Mart. Ed Mart. Two um, six. Oh my God. So <laughs> <laughs> he, he was the guy that taught me how to expose. Mm -hmm. Because number one, he, um, <laughs> he had a Fujifilm XE3. Mm. And it was his behind the scenes photos right. that made me like, yeah okay yeah because if you don't know how to tell a story by taking a photo right how the hell can you get behind a hundred thousand dollar cinema camera right and do the same thing right like <laughs> i should be able to be invested in the story just by the photos that are being taken mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i want the picture to grab me mm -hmm. and that's what he was doing just with his freaking little his little pocket like mm -hmm. you know fujifilm xc3 he would point it out Catch it, ch -ch 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 -ch. Mm -hmm. and I'll just be like, "What?" Right. Like a year later, I bought that camera, and, mm -hmm. I, was, and I was just like, "I'm gonna do the same thing." Mm -hmm. Um, and so I would watch Ed, and mm -hmm. I would see what he would do, and I would see, look at his lighting. I would be like, "What are you doing to get that?" Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And I would be over his shoulder, and I was pulling focus, and I was just all over the freaking place right. with it. There were a couple times where I had to step in, and um, and man the camera, mm -hmm. but that's only because it was probably probably a two camera setup yeah. mm -hmm. and you know we were tied on time that day mm -hmm. but um really like the majority of the time it was me helping ed because that was also one of ed's first jobs mm -hmm. too and he learned a lot on that job as well mm -hmm. and he has grown exponentially yes. like exponentially as a freaking mm -hmm. like every time i see his work i'm just yeah. like bro like, like <laughs> stepping up right he's stepping mm -hmm. up he recently just shot a, a music video for black that's mm -hmm. that's going amazing right now mm -hmm. and he was doing all the since i will over video yeah yep. like where they're all flying in the mm -hmm. air and like it's crane work yep. and i'm just like well yeah that's the next thing i want to get into right <laughs> <laughs> right you know so um <laughs> right so i've learned a great deal with him we've had a great deal of conversations we still would meet up every now and then and mm -hmm. i would get advice like from him like not even on cinematography but just navigating the industry period right. you know because you like you still got to be careful out here when you know you're going on some of these projects because you really got to check yourself yeah you know you got to be careful uh because one thing could be said about you over here and that shit will travel like yep. wildfire mm -hmm. you know so one of the things that i've always been told is you're only as good as your last job mm -hmm. um so every single time I get a job, I just treat it like it's my first one, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to make sure that I'm putting my best foot forward. And I'm setting the best impression. Mm -hmm. you know? How was the experience on that show? 
on sorry about that yeah it was amazing but yeah. it was it was amazing yeah. i was working <laughs> i was working with everyone that that i still consider friends now yeah um you know zay was just recently in swarm mm. which was great yep. and um and nina shot her project for abff mm. and then um uh there there's a couple other people that are they're still on the up and up right mm -hmm. now just from that show and i'm i'm ecstatic about it because you know it shows that everyone is on this same uh, trajectory yeah you know uh we're just going in different directions mm -hmm. and that's all well and good because uh, i know eventually we're probably all going to come back and do another project again and mm -hmm. that's something that i'm hoping for <laughs> for sure for sure no it's definitely gonna yeah. and like when it dropped i was like wow like this is like you yeah. could tell like the Atlanta ness like of not the show but the actual like city mm -hmm. <laughs> of mm -hmm. like the series and I was like oh, okay like it has like a voice mm -hmm. comedic time and like comedic effect and it was just shot well and I was like all right everybody had a labor of love in this thing you know it what did, I'm saying man, like it, it was did. great yeah man one of the one of the things that actually happened during the shoot and I just remember this the other day was um we were shooting on um it wasn't Ponce but it was um of the street that that churches is on oh yeah oh yeah um, <laughs> auburn Ave? yeah auburn yeah. Avenue. we were shooting on <laughs> auburn avenue the scene where i think zay is is seeing um nina like for the first time and she's leading the protest right um and like he's running up and seeing her but across on the back way where he's walking away with javier um you know we're shooting and then all of a sudden i hear this loud bang like in the back and mm -hmm. look back and it was a car accident right but this car had hit another car like really really bad um we had stopped filming but when i looked back there was a baby in the car um that got mm -hmm. hit mm -hmm. and like i was like oh shit. Right. so i dropped like the slate and i immediately ran over right. and i was just like ma'am are you okay right, right. <laughs> so i had to i had to help her get her kids out get her out and everything mm -hmm. um and it was just like, like it was it was an adrenaline rush for sure. But then right after I made sure they were okay, we went right back to filming. Right. <laughs> and I think I remember Ed saying like, "Well, that was cool." Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> a great human. Right. <laughs> I was like, "You were the first person to be over there. Good job." Right. Like, I was like, "Yeah, like it, right. it's okay. We were all in shock, but right. like there was a baby in the car, right, right, right. and I was afraid. <laughs> right. Right. Go save the baby. <laughs> that part, yes. Please. A so, human thing. <laughs> right. It's a human thing. Go save the baby. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was it was a great move. That's what's up, move. man. That's yeah, what's man. up. What are some cinematographers that you look up to? Like that you admire, uh, man. I feel like that list changes every single day. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um, thinking about like directors too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, who? I'm like, I, I do love Julie Dash and like Charles Burnett, but like, mm -hmm. I love like. So, yeah. so some people that stay with me, mm -hmm. um, and when I say stay with me, I like, like their I, films like impact you so much. So right, yeah, it impacts me because I feel it here. First. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like when I feel it here, mm -hmm. then I'm just like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to watch this, whatever it is I'm going to watch. Right. Because I have to. Right. So that's Bradford Young, mm -hmm. Rachel Morrison, mm -hmm. um, um, Adam Arkapow, mm -hmm. uh, his wife, mm -hmm. uh, Autumn DeRald mm -hmm. Arkapow. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have uh, a recent DP that I worked with uh, on, a, on a project, mm -hmm. the, the lowest project, mm -hmm. uh, Sam Davis, mm -hmm. which I, uh, funny story about that, um, Matt who called me to work on, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. He asked me if I was uh, free this past week. I, I went in to go, you know, basically help with the project. And when I was speaking with the producer, she was just like, yeah, I'd love for you to meet our DP, Sam Davis. And I was like, Sam Davis. Right. And so I went back to my Vimeo page of right. like 700 <laughs> videos that right. I have saved. And I went back to this yeah. one South by Southwest mm -hmm. film that I saved called, Are You Still There? Yep. And I was like, Sam Davis. Yeah. And I texted it to him. I said, did you shoot this? Right. He said, yeah. He's uh, like, I was like, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> and I right. was like, I've been following you for years. Right, right. It is such an honor to meet you. Right. <laughs> yeah. So when so when we met up on set, the director, Ben, he was just like, so were you fangirling over <laughs> Sam? <laughs> and I said, respectfully, yeah. yeah of course. Because when you shoot something that looks that amazing, yeah. 
Like, let, let me be clear when I say amazing. Mm-hmm. It just looks how it should look. Right. It looks like real life. And talk about that. Like, talk about, like, how, what makes a good film yeah. shot well. To me. That makes it great. So, to me, what makes a film great to me is if when I look at it, I don't have any doubt that that's real life. Right. I'm talking about all the way to the emulsion, Mm -hmm. to the color, to the landscape, the atmosphere, what they're wearing, their skin, like how it appears on that camera and how it, how it is exposed. Mm -hmm. If I can see the pores and the sweat sweating down from the freaking hairline Mm -hmm. all the way down to the chin. Like if I can see that and I'm like, I feel like I'm there. That is a good fucking film to me. Right. You know, and I try to emote that in all of my projects. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, any DP that can effectively do that, you have my attention. Mm-hmm. So, which is why I will, I will always go to bat for, um, most importantly, DPs that are still on the up and come up. Like, right. you have Allende Anderson mm-hmm. that's out in LA. Yes. You also have... Um, I think he's like here shooting something right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he okay. is. Yeah. He mm-hmm. probably is. He's yeah. all over. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yep. mm-hmm. and then you have um, my boy in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting, blanking on his name right now. Um, oh, uh, Olan? Olan. Olan. Yes. Olan Yo. Coyardi. I remember I, I asked him a couple questions in some fireside chats. And, what? Um, yeah. <laughs> And like, yo, one of his favorite videos, one of one of my favorite videos of his is um is a short film that he had shot. And I think it I think it has to do with mothers, uh, yeah. black mothers. And it's very simple. Mm-hmm. It's just basically a couple that's going to a doctor about their baby. Right. And over time, um, they are you you see the progression of the marriage and the progression of the child being born. So she goes in, they have the consultation. Hey, you're pregnant. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. She comes back. She has now a baby bump. You can see that you know time has passed. And then they come back. They see the child again. Um, okay, great. There's been some complications with the child. Now they're being worried. It, it was essentially like an ad mm-hmm. um, that he had shot. I, I might be butchering it a little bit, but. Um, they shot that in one location mm-hmm. and with one light. Mm-hmm. It was pretty simple, straightforward, right. and it looked amazing. Right, <laughs> and I was just like, "It can really be that simple." Like, <laughs> I, I, yo, I like DM him like all the time. I'm like, "How did?" Because you know he posts behind the scenes. Yes, on like every shoot that he does, and I'm yes. like, "Bro, how did you do that?" Right. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, it's just like a simple like a wrap around, da da da, da yes. like a little bounce yes. board, and then you do that." And I'm like, "Bro, mm-hmm. what?" Yeah. And when in like one of my favorite things that I love to see is whenever I would see another cinematographer do a breakdown because mm-hmm. I do breakdowns too. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the first time I did a breakdown was it was right before the pandemic. I was working on a show uh, with uh, Kim Alex Hall mm-hmm. and the, the DP was Trevor May, who's mm-hmm. another friend, a uh, great DP as well. Yep. Um, shout he, out to Trev. Right. Shout out to Trevor. <laughs> um, he recently shot a, a TV show with B. Simone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Yep. I, was, I need to watch it though. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we were in the, uh, we were in the studio that we were actually supposed to make a club. And then when Trevor was explaining to me what he wanted to do, I literally took a piece of printer paper yep. and I drew a schematic of the club and I drew out every single light and what it was going to be doing in the certain direction. Right. And he was like, yeah, that I want to do that. And I right. was like, great. <laughs> and in, in right. the next like 40 minutes, I set up all those lights mm-hmm. and we pretty much got 80% of what we Because it was what, TV1, right? That show. Um, or Bounce TV. Is it TV1 or Bounce? Yeah, Bounce. Bounce, Bounce TV. Yeah, because yeah. I was looking, I was like, I talked to them about Trevor about it and I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, it looks good. And I was like, because mm-hmm. it's, it's black skin, yeah. different shades of black skin, you know? <laughs> it's just like, Either you're good at it or you're not, not. you know, you know. (laughs) So, yeah. So, you know, that was that was my experience experience with that was building the breakdowns, which I always love, because sometimes, um, you know, even myself, I can be fooled a little bit where I'm Mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, maybe he used a light there. there, Right. And it's completely the opposite of what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, it's way simpler than that. Mm -hmm. So. You know, because sometimes I can overcomplicate yep. um, some lighting scenarios when mm-hmm. really it can just be as straightforward as possible. Super simple. Like stick it over in that corner, diffuse it, open up that shade or put some black neck up there and then, you know, you got what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I th- like that kind of takes me into my philosophy 
a little bit of what I've been discovering of of what impacts me, mm-hmm. like with a piece of good work, which is also going to be, which also translates into how I shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, minimal setups, minimal lighting. Mm-hmm. Um, going more so the direction of you know, let's see what it would look like if we were just to take the camera out and just put it on someone Mm -hmm. um with no lights Mm -hmm. how does that look Mm -hmm. you know um how does that impact you Mm -hmm. this that this that and the third Mm -hmm. and i've been doing a lot of experimenting with that a lot of researching on that front and it it's been it's been eye-opening for sure Mm -hmm. because it's making me think back to all my past projects and i'm just sitting here like like man, oh, I could have did this this way, mm-hmm. or like I could have did that that way, mm-hmm. because it starts to really mean something when I'm going back and I'm like correcting the mistakes that yeah. I did, and now I'm just like I know what I can do next time. Mm-hmm. Like one of the things that I always tell my partner, um, for these projects that we have coming up, because we have a couple documentaries we're going to be shooting this mm-hmm. year, and you know I kind of pull all my put put all my odds to the side and I was just like, hey, listen, mm-hmm. uh, we need to start coming out with some projects right. that that we know that are going to be top notch. Mm-hmm. But we have to be honest in how we approach it. Hundred ten percent. Um when I was having this conversation with him two nights ago, I said if the sun is over here, I'm gonna be over here. Right. I'm shooting against mm-hmm. it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna stay in the shadow. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be over here. I'm gonna be over there. Because I feel like I'm going to get the most flattering image from here. Right. I feel like I'm going to get the most flattering image from there. Mm-hmm. And then once I start there, I go into dialogue. Mm-hmm. You know, what are they talking about? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, capturing the moment, like, right when they have an epiphany or right when they have a realization. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's where I think your true colors as a DP mm-hmm. comes from, is when you're doing a lot of doc work and you're just, you're, Focusing on capturing right. that emotion, right. that feeling. Raw images is like right then and there. Yes. <laughs> like when you're capturing that emotion mm-hmm. and that feeling of the person right then and mm-hmm. there and everything is set and it's perfect. Right. And I'm just like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Now you're playing ball. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because not only are you gripping somebody with how the an image looks, but the authentic- but authenticity, mm-hmm. authenticity. <laughs> authenticity, but authenticity. I like authen intensity. <laughs> authenticity. I like that merge. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a brand. No, 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 that. no, that's a t-shirt brand. It's not a mess up. <laughs> <laughs> authen intensity. <laughs> authen intensity. I like right. that. No, 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 no right. I like that. Keep that. Right. Yeah, we're there. Mm-hmm. The authen intensity. Yes. <laughs> within the scene yeah. and the emotion that is being evoked. Yeah. From the person that's on camera, right? You're setting yourself apart, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So it, that that's that's the wave, right? <laughs> the wave that I'm on right. right. Now. Going a, back to surf. As a surfer, <laughs> 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 we yeah. were talking uh, earlier in the lobby um, about your upcoming project. Um, mm. Talk about that with uh, Nick Grant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not only that, but just your uh, the narrative project about mm-hmm. black men. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about Nick Grant first. Mm-hmm. I, I got the opportunity to shoot, uh, to work with Jacob again. He mm-hmm. he asked me to come in and he's like, hey, man, like uh, we're shooting two days in Atlanta, three days in South Carolina. Um, and it's a five day shoot. I want you to come in DP. Mm-hmm. And I, I like without even knowing the other details, I instinctively said, dude, yeah, mm-hmm. like I would freaking love to because it's it's kind of an honor when you have a director that you respect that you right. know do good work ask you to come and like hey like hey come and shoot this for me yeah like i trust you mm-hmm. and that's very hard mm-hmm. you know to put that trust into someone else mm-hmm. but that that only comes when you got a couple years in the game and yeah. you have experience mm-hmm. and you've been through all the woes mm-hmm. and you have dialed in your style, mm-hmm. made the mistakes along the way, mm-hmm. but you dialed it into the point where you're just like, this is me 110%. And mm-hmm. if I can't be that every single time, it's not for me. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll begin the chance to work with Jacob ag- again, uh, coming up in the next uh, week and a half. Mm-hmm. And we'll be starting off in Atlanta and then going to South Carolina. Um, which it'll be a string of music videos 
uh, tied in with a narrative story, mm-hmm. which I think is is very dope. clever. Yep. Yeah, it's dope. very dope. Yeah, because um, it reminds me of another project that I shot uh, last year where I was doing a I was I shot and directed a national ad, mm-hmm. um, but it was in the series of like small little commercials mm-hmm. that led up to a bigger commercial. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and then the the short film that I wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, called uh that damn brown sugar mm-hmm. um not a whole lot of people know about it only certain people know about it mm-hmm. um but basically that is a narrative where it's two men having a conversation mm-hmm. about dating in this in this time mm-hmm. and i'm taking it a way different approach to it because i as a writer i have been a writer for the past i want to say um who effectively like i've been writing for for ever since 2019 mm-hmm. um going into 2019 and just kind of stank keeping with it mm-hmm. um i have i have this thing where i like to play with metaphors mm-hmm. to paint as scenarios um so one of the big things with that damn brown sugar is i paint the metaphor for dating um by using the uh, by using the analogy of a book mm-hmm. um Catcher in the Rye, mm-hmm. essentially. Uh, one of the lines in in the story is, uh, like, have you ever met someone, um, or do you know what it's like to operate in a world as someone who's looking for a community out of being displaced? Mm-hmm. Um, if you've read Catcher in the Rye, right. Great book. you know you <laughs> <laughs> you would understand why I right. said that because not um, a lot of rye in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's not, there's not a lot of rye. There's not a lot of rye. No. He ain't doing catching no, either, no. to be quite honest with you. There's not a lot of catching. Not a lot of rye. No. No. no Completely no, different. Yeah, Completely yeah, yeah. different. So, Still um, a great book. Right. But, but the gist of the book is basically the kid gets kicked out of school because mm-hmm. of some shit that he did. And then he goes and parlays up in New York for right. a couple days and mm-hmm. then gets his ass handed to him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I basically use that as a metaphor for um, describing the dating scene for a particular person, like in my film, mm-hmm. essentially of they want to explore, but they soon realize they're a little bit more conservative than mm-hmm. they think they are. Correct. Um, I use this as a very short narrative um, in part of the script, but then it flips back to the other person that he's having conversation with. Mm-hmm. Um, to be clear, it's a younger black male having a conversation with older black male. Mm-hmm. So kind of like a like a nephew, uncle type situation, mm-hmm. or like a dad and son. Right. Um, you have uh, your one person who's coming in. Well, they're both coming in and they're having a conversation. Mm-hmm. And they're basically a little bit drunk, but he's just like, hey, I want to talk to you about something. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, if it's about women, I don't want to talk about it. Right. You know, but you already know that's what he wants to talk about. Right. So... He goes on, he's complaining, like, oh, they're this, they're that, and the third, da, da, da. But the older character is just kind of coming back and being like, okay, but you do realize it's not all their fault. Right. You're allowing some of this to happen. Mm-hmm. So how, what can we do to fix that? Right. Which leads him into his metaphor. Mm-hmm. Outside of the metaphor, he turns the tables back on him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we lead into his backstory mm-hmm. as to why he made the decisions he made and why he has the outlook he has. Mm-hmm. And then in the end... I actually pose a question to the audience as of what do you guys think or what would you do? Right. Given that you've been given this information, um, what do you think of this character? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to give too many spoilers, but, um, but that film is special to me because like we were talking in the lobby earlier today, I, I want to change this narrative Mm -hmm. of, um, how black men are seen just not just in media, but just in the world period. Correct. You know, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't want this narrative just like, we're not shit. Right. You know, um, I'm kind of tired of seeing that. Right. And I think a good example of that is actually recently with A.V. Rockwell's film. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That we were just talking about. Right. That we were just talking (laughs) about. 2001. 2001. Yeah. And, the character of Lucky mm-hmm. did a great job of portraying someone who, yes, it it indeed, in fact, was not his right. son. Right. But he stood, he stepped up anyway. Right. And he decided to go in, take care of him, did what he had to do. Mm-hmm. And so, but and with that, that should not be a rarity. Correct. 
you know, mm -hmm. that should be accepted. Mm -hmm. That should be something in our community that we talk about. Right. So I want to be able to open up the books and talking about some of the double edged swords or even the, um, um, you know, like complexities. Any, yeah, the, 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 the complexities of like what is dating like for us mm -hmm. and do we actually have a stage that we can talk about it on mm -hmm. or is it always just going to be thrown back in our face and shit that we're doing wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that's not to say that we're completely out of fault because right. yeah, there are some things that we do need yeah. to work on. Mm -hmm. Not not taking that off right. the table, mm -hmm. but there are some things I'm just like, hey, let's let's wipe the slate clean. Right. Let's get something straight for right. a second. <laughs> let's look okay. at some raw data. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was about I'll the have data. to look at the facts. Right, yeah, yeah, facts, <laughs> facts. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, but with this film, which I'll also be shooting and directing mm -hmm. um, on thirty five millimeter, actually, nice. Um, and it's it's a great endeavor. And this is you know, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to get the attention of Coleman Domingo. Yes. to be in this film. Yeah, <laughs> it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah, it'll happen. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. You know, and um, I think it's a really powerful message once it's told mm -hmm. right, and. Once I set the stage of like, hey, like this is my interpretation of, of this conversation starting. Right. You know, and I just want to set the ground straight with that. Mm. So, yeah. Appreciate it. I can't I can't wait for that, man. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, And the reason why, you know, I reached out to you and why, you know, I have you on this podcast is because black filmmakers and directors and cinematographers like you um I want y'all to like tell y'all stories. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and to have a platform to say like, yo, like. I don't like certain films or I don't like the way certain films are shot or mm -hmm. I just want mm -hmm. my <laughs> unique story to be out there mm -hmm. and my perspective. You know what I'm saying? So I do appreciate you coming on to the yeah. show, man. Yes, sir. Mr. Dwayne Young. And I can't wait to see what you're doing in the future, man. Hey, man. I'll be there if you need me. Just let me know. You know, you know I'm gonna call you. You know, this will not be the last time. <laughs> for sure. Thank you, for thank sure. you, thank you for having me on here, man. Yes, it was sir. a pleasure, and I can't wait to do this again because yes, it was sir. really fun. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm hitting the freaking mic. I can't. Did you do this on purpose? I'm already short. Come on, Vante. Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I got really? stubby arms. That's a Mr. Robinson's quote, by the way, for those who don't know. <laughs> Yeah, man. No, for real. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, man. For sure. For sure. Yeah, man. Definitely. Thank Definitely, you, man. You, the, art, the art is the only way, man. Oh, yeah. Thank yes, sir. Appreciate Absolutely. it.